Hey everyone, welcome back again to Build Tune Race. We're still working on the Camaro here, but everything as far as the cage goes is all welded up and pretty much finished except for a transmission mount underneath the car. So today I actually ended up finding a Turbo 400 case for it and we have a mock-up block outside. So we're gonna hook those things together, try to slide it in there. The car still does have the little power glide mount in it. The Turbo 400 is longer. I brought my little handy dandy engine lift hoist still and I got the solid motor mounts off of the Camaro from before. So I went ahead and bolted those onto this real, real nice 5.3 mock-up block that we've had. That's actually what he used in the Hummer. I don't remember, he might have even used that in the uh, Skylark as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that with that and get it inside. There we go, the 5.3 motor mounts and Turbo 400 are ready to slide in there. Let's just see if we can, we can go in this way with it. So even though we cut all this stuff out, we still uh, still can't get the motor in like that. So really, if you guys are doing something like this, use one of the forward holes, I guess. So now we're kind of in here goofed up, but we'll, uh, we'll figure this out. All right guys, so we got the engine set in here and uh, more or less what I did is I, I pretty much lined up the mount for the Turbo 400 flat with where the power glide was, kind of just used a flat edge and made sure we're flat, lifted the tranny up. I'll show you guys here in a minute. But I looked it up and ideally for a drag situation, the engine will be tilted about two degrees. It's plus or minus, I think five or whatever, or minus five is ideal. So here's flat on the table. Let's see. So that's four. So it, that's a little bit more, but that's actually where it's sitting. So maybe that's about factory. Uh, Cause we are using factory motor mounts. We're not building like a motor plate or anything into this. So, I'm gonna look up, verify that four is good to go for this uh, angle of the engine. I think it was somewhere between, it said ideally you're at two to negative like eight or something like that. But so four is really not that bad, but they said for drag applications like two, um, but maybe factory is about four since we are using factory motor mounts and trying to hang the tranny in the factory somewhat location and angle in this car. So uh, do a little Googling and we'll uh, verify if that's right. Well, here's the turbo 400 sitting in here. This here is the power glide mount. I know it's kind of dark, but the original power glide went there. And then now the Turbo 400 is gonna be clear back here. So it's, I think it's five or six inches difference between the power glide and the 400. But what we did is we built this little wall of mounts here to set the tranny on. So now I can remove the factory power glide mount or the, uh, you know, the power glide swap mount that I had in here prior, but I just want to make sure that this all lines up height wise with the angle in the chassis. So now I can pop this thing out and then we can build a tranny cross member that comes from this inner frame rail to that inner frame rail. That has, it's, it'll be unbolt, you can unbolt it and slide it out right here and it'll be attached to the back of the tranny. I ordered this kit from McAmos that has these little clover dills. This is a legal thing that you can make the tranny mount into three pieces, blah, 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 all throughout the book and everything. And then it comes with these little mounts uh, and this Turbo 400 plate that bolts up to the bottom of the Turbo 400. So the plan is, I think, to try to get like a Rossler it's called on a Mickey, those are super expensive, or there's some other people that build like Turbo 400s. I'd like to do a close ratio Turbo 400. Uh, the Buick has a 210 in it. I would like to do at least like a 210 or better, like a 190 something first gear in the Turbo 400. So that is what I'm gonna build the car around is a 400, because I mean, that's what all the fast people are pretty much using right now. So looking back at our book, here's the floor. Here's more or less what I'm looking at is building this cross member, actually this one right here. So building this cross member right here, 6C, and it says it can be 16 inches back, which it works out. We already looked at that 16 inches back from here, and it can be made of three piece, as long as you're of a certain size and using like those little brackets that I'm gonna use wherever they're at now, right here. But one thing that's interesting is I thought I was gonna have to build these 39s in here as gussets for 6C, because what's nice is 6C is just a straight bar that we're gonna make. But when you look at all the handy dandy notes here, it says the above floor gussets number 39 are not required for cars with OEM body shell, including rocker boxes, OEM rear fenders, OEM doors, OEM or replacement steel floors. More or less, as long as the floor pan is solid from there to there, and this is a unibody car, OEM floor pan, we don't have to have 39. So what's nice is I can just build that one transmission cross member and that should be it. So it saves us from building a couple extra bars in the floor. Got my one piece bar. 
It pretty much fits in there real decent. I don't want to make it tight again because it's kind of a pain. Whoa. That was loud. So as you guys can see, it more or less will go in there. Um, we just got to line it up better. But once it's straight, it's pretty tight. Now that that bar is in there, it's in pretty decent. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, cut it into the three pieces. I kind of made a mark on the width of the tranny and everything. Cut that out and then be able to uh, weld these on, make it into a three piece and then put it back in. Weld the tab that holds the tranny and everything should be good. Now there it is. Our one piece is three pieces. So I'm gonna take my little flanges, slide them on in here, here, there, and there, as long as that don't fall off. And uh, then we'll get it all back to being one piece. Trying to balance that side up and then have the same gap over here. So I need to get me a couple more little plates and then it should equal out. So let's try that. All right, so I found two flat plates here, two flat plates back there that you guys probably can't see, but then really the tube's not rocking and the edges of the bracket are sitting on the plate. So everything should stay square. So at least I know that these holes are in line with those holes. So when I put these holes straight, everything stays straight throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Well, there it is, the main tube is in there. Pretty much lines up right where I need it. Now I just need to build the little mount that goes from that bar up to the Turbo 400 and uh, weld it to that plate there that's bolted to the transmission. And then we have transmission mount in here. So pop back over here and already got the little upright completed over there. You guys see it hopefully right in that general area. So I actually ended up measuring kind of a couple spots on the K-member. And then I also use this little spot back here for the seat belt mounts. Hoping that those are somewhat square in the chassis, used a few different points to figure out to make sure this bar in here is more or less square. So I think I got everything. I'm gonna tack up everything, mark out where the bar sits, pull it out, weld everything up, and then set it in the car. And then all I'll have to do is the last welds right here on the end. Okay, so just whittling away at it. Keep clamping them down, welding little bits at a time, just so then the uh, plate doesn't warp up on the ends and then it makes the flange all you know, gapped out. Not want to bolt together and all that stuff. So just take my time, welding each one, and getting it done. And uh, there's just like things like this. It takes, I mean, I've probably been working on it for an hour, just trying to weld little bits of time, let the material cool in between, reclamp, work our way around it, just so then uh, you don't mess up all the work you just did. But otherwise, while we're on break here, might as well talk about this. The Salty's pretty much done. I do need to shorten the rear end, but I think I'm gonna actually take that car back over to the other shop put on the list so we can start working on some other stuff and then get the rear end out because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get some wheels and uh, just new axles, stuff like that once I get it apart. So get it over there and then I can start, you know, mounting and working on other things. Then hopefully the engine should be here, you know, well, we're still waiting on some parts for the heads and the heads will go together. Then the heads will go over to the engine shop. The engine shop will assemble the whole long block and then ship it to me. So in a little bit of a hold pattern there, just waiting on some stuff, but it is some super, super nice pieces. I can't wait to show you guys, but otherwise it's gonna get back to welding. So hopefully I can get this in there and we can be just about done with this cage. I am leaving some of the stuff below unwelded. So then when I'm on the four post lift, kind of like this new project that my dad got in here, but then I can reach up in there and weld it a whole lot easier than squeezing down there and welding it there. But Actually, what my dad's doing is that right there is a Godzilla. So 7.3 liter Godzilla big block that will be going in that truck. So pretty cool little build. Pulled the old motor out, 
And uh, he's just, it's just gonna be a stock Godzilla swap in this thing, which would be really freaking sweet. Godzilla swaps are becoming super popular lately, so it'd be kind of cool to see what they come up with that. So I ran into a little issue, maybe a bigger one than I thought. So this, I could tell, was twisted whenever I pulled it out of the car. And I wouldn't think it would based on my measurements on the chassis. I thought it was pretty square. So then I started looking at the engine. To me, the engine looks, well, actually, I know it's in a little crooked. It's kind of twisted in there like that. So I need to figure out, do these engines sit in here a little twisted in the car from like the factory? Like, is it designed that way? I wouldn't think so. But then I come to the back and definitely the tranny is pointed. And if you guys can see that, the tranny is pointed in that same direction. So I'm pretty sure it's sitting in here crooked. But when I put it in there, I mean, I should probably get a power glide, hook it to the stock mount, and then when I remove the stock mount, make sure it doesn't twist. I wouldn't think that it would. It doesn't even feel like I have the ability to like twist the engine in there anyway. Like there's a bunch of play from it being on the motor mounts, but uh, something I definitely want to verify before I fully weld this plate, because easy enough, I cut the little plate off, get everything aligned straight and then weld that part on because that's kind of the part that will connect the back point of the three point triangles. All right, so here's what I'm doing. I ended up putting the original drive shaft loop in and drive shaft mount. I have a bolt hanging come from the center hole to give me a visual. So then I can go underneath, make take measurements, kind of come back here. I've been looking at it. I'm trying to figure out what is center. So it's definitely better now where it's centered up but uh, it's still off by just a hair. What I actually had to do was loosen up the motor mount bolts. I think like the mounts in the camembert are a little twisted or something, which it's already ha always had some tension there, but I have a strap here, kind of hooked onto the transmission, pulling it this way, and then a strap up here on the engine, kind of twisting it that way. Well, there it is. Transmission mount is in and solid. So other than a little bit of welding underneath the car, the Roll cage should be pretty much done and able to be certified. Uh, it's gonna be time to clean up my mess, get all my parts that I've had sitting over here loaded up, and get everything back over to the other shop so we can keep going on everything. I think the next step's gonna be the two front end and then hopefully the engine will be showing up, then we can start doing turbo kit, all that stuff while mounting stuff in the back. I do still need to do the uh, that little piece there, cut all this out and weld that up and uh, yeah, we'll, Still yet to do that, so a lot more things to come, but it's time to get this thing loaded up and out of here.